I was walking on the road and I remember this guy, he was much older, I was around 13 years old at the time, and the guy was around 25 or 26 years old. And uh, he came over to me and he said, you know, how oh, you look like a woman, so. You know, and I told him to leave me alone and he began calling me faggot. You know, when you were a kid, nobody calls you a faggot. They call you names like girly. And uh, this guy called me that and it was shocking. And, you know, I responded by saying something nasty to him. I can't tell you exactly what I said. But all I know is that he took his knife out and he flashed the knife. And he left me a permanent scar in my face. In Jamaica, it's not difficult to, to brand people. Yeah? Um, if they see any single male who does not visibly have any girlfriend, no string of women that come to visit them, then, uh, you know, they are immediately branded. So they obviously branded me and um, wanted to get me out. And um, as I heard it, that they were coming to burn down the house that I lived in. So um, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. I said, there was nowhere in Jamaica that I could be safe. So the only option left for me was to leave. The persecution continued and I decided I was going to try my luck at the United States Embassy. And I went and I applied for a visa just because I wanted to go to a place to see where to see what freedom could look like. And I came to the United States and after I came here I was just in love. At the time I didn't know that I could apply for political asylum. So I stayed here, you know, got involved in the gay community here, went to protests, went to group meetings and just lived, went to clubs, dance and just live. And I had a dose of what freedom could look like. Um, under U.S. asylum law, a person can uh, get a permanent immigration status in the United States if they can prove that they fear persecution in their country on account of a protected characteristic. Those characteristics are race, religion, nationality, membership in a particular social group, or political opinion. And since 1994, in the United States, sexual orientation has fallen under the membership in a particular social group category. So a person, if he or she can prove a well-founded fear of persecution in their country, um, can seek asylum in the United States um, as a means of uh, providing protection to that person and not making them you know, return to a country where they're fearful for their, for their life or their safety. What was challenging was the stress of Having your life in the balance, yeah. Your life is dependent on somebody's decision. Yeah. You don't know whether you're going to get a yes or a no. It's just a big unknown, a big question mark. And I lived here for maybe seven years to eight years, undocumented. During those times, I washed dishes, I cleaned people's floor, I did all the work so-called dirty work, I was paid under the table. And throughout the whole process, I was always afraid of being discovered and going back home. After eight years, I began to inquire and discover that I might be eligible for political asylum. There was a problem, however. When you want to get political asylum, you have to apply within the one year filing deadline. I was eight years outside of the filing deadline. The risk of that is that high risk, you are not going to get political asylum and you're going to, you're going to be deported. And I took the risk and I got political asylum in December 2009. People can say it doesn't exist, that's what they say, but there have been so many people who have gotten political asylum and they all have been given the same story that starts with abuse coming from primary school into high school, family rejection, and when they get older, 
been cut, been stabbed, and been killed. It's well documented. So I wouldn't argue with people who say you can live your life there. Indeed, there are many homosexuals who are living their lives in Jamaica. But I'd say that's their life, not my life. The life I am living now, which is the life that I wanted, is a life that fully embodies freedom. I know what freedom is. And for the remainder of my life, I want to discover what it could become, how wider it can grow. You could take my story and repeat it, you know, 50 times, and, you know, the country is losing some of the best educated, the best trained, the most intelligent, um, you know, the most creative, the most innovative people, um, you know, to, uh, to other countries, yeah. And if I remember rightly, that um, Jamaica has the third highest number of asylees, yeah, based on sexual orientation to the U.S. So I think that says a lot.